So the first order of business is to uh, open uh, separate from roll call, which I assume the secretary will take. I will take that. Um, motions order open the meeting. So vote. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Um, any comments from the public? Questions? If not, motion to close. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Um, next item of business is approval of the meeting minutes for our last meeting in February. I have one comment. Yes. I have one comment on the second page. It's just really long. No, I'm sorry. It's on the third page under policy D in the second paragraph, the second line, the first word. Whereas I think, uh, in memory of John, who I know had a great sense of humor, um, I don't think the word is post humans. Post humans. Post humans. Right. So it's P O S T H U M O U S instead of post humans. Posthumous. I just can't spell. I thought that was yours. <laughs> I've also observed the bill already that oh, it's Cecile MacIver, I V O R, not MacGyver. Okay. If not, motion to approve the minutes as correct. Second. Second. All in favor? Uh, uh, the minutes are approved. Um, next would be the financial report. Terry, do you want to? Oh, uh, yes. Yeah, so I just put the financial report in the middle of the table this there. This is the financial report? Yes. Yeah. Everybody got one? Um, no. Okay. Yes, yeah. So basically, it just shows yeah. what was spent in, um, in no. February. Thanks. Um, and I went through it with Kathy Moody and all the numbers add up correctly, so that's good news. Um, <laughs> um, we always like when the numbers add up. Yes. That's always good. So if you have, I guess the best thing is if you have any questions, just let me know if you look at it. This is not like going through numbers line by line. So this is more like the yeah, operating. It's the operating, yeah, so it's, yep. So 30000 was spent, is that correct? Um, no, that's Yeah, in February. Yes. So, uh, so one of the things, and I, and I always caution everybody, is that a, a lot of the items that are in the that are paid for out of the budget are things that might be uh, two times a year, six times a year, twelve times a year, depends on what it is, and it and a and a blanket purchase order is done in the beginning of the year to cover the cost of those expenses over the course of the year. So in the beginning, it might look like there's a whole bunch of money being spent, right. but the reality is is that it's not being spent; it's being encumbered, right. and that, which are you know for the two very different things. And and uh, right. so if, if if you have questions, like like Tara said, and then if you have questions, you can shoot me an email too, and I'll answer them to the best of my ability too. So because it says the full time salary, mm -hmm. half of it's. Because it's moved into the salary budget, so we pay salary out of a different line in the in the general budget. So the money is moved out of the open space budget and into the general salary budget, so that we can write them checks every two weeks and mm -hmm. pay them. Um, so so the, that's a good example of it. That's what I'm talking about. That's, so that's not uh, total expenditures. That's not. In that's an encumbrance okay. more, than a, more than an expenditure. Okay. Understand. Yep. Mm -hmm. what, what do we have for a trust fund number? Do we have one? Not yet, no. Because so, and, and I told you, and one of the things, and it, and it will probably be coming sooner rather than later, is that we still have to sell the bonds for the acquisition of a couple properties, including um, Consolata, which was like $10 million okay. of it. So. The, the cash balance is probably about four or five million dollars right now, but the but the actual available balance is probably like sixteen million dollars. You know, so that's the difference. Um, yeah. But until we until we sell the bonds and have all that done, which 
Well, we're being kind of encouraged to go to the farm market, like I said, sooner rather than later, just because of the market right now is favorable. So that's what, once we get the budget adopted um, in April, I think that'll be the next course of action for us. And it's not just the open space bonds, there's more utility bonds, general capital bonds. The, um, how many bonds do we still have? coming out of the open space, do we know? Well, the debt service is there, um, but okay. I, I think right now there's two that we, we paid, paid off one, service. right? Yeah, yeah paid off yes. one. Yep. Yeah. And in fact, um, a, a, an upcoming acquisition that I can't talk about in this public meeting, but an upcoming acquisition is being <laughs> paid for by one of those outstanding bonds that still has cash available that goes back to like 2003. Mm -hmm. Okay. Oh, wow. wow. Yeah. <laughs> so that's, yeah. Good. Didn't, that's, that's didn't the, we just amended an ordinance? That's what, that? um, uh, yeah, you did. Actually, so yeah, so it is public, isn't it, Ted? You're right. That, no, I, I, st I stand corrected. No, and so I can't remember what we do in the executive session, but it's the 518 Route 27 property um, uh, adjacent to the Higgins Farm. That property is, is on that bond ordinance. You're absolutely right, yeah. uh, Council. Yeah. Uh, By the way, that other <coughs> little mm -hmm. property that we weren't interested in, there's a sign up that it's being sold at auction. Yeah, I, that, that doesn't surprise me. The other property, the Farm Credit East owns. Yeah. Um, desperate to get rid of. Building lot. So the electricity, um, I'm sh that one struck me because if this is a 12 month budget, um, uh, 1900. No, no, no. I didn't say that it's a 12. I, not every. Some things are yeah. paid month by month. It depends on what it is. But electric, well. I'm just looking at the electricity where it says 1900 like if you average if it's a, if that's a monthly bill I don't know I don't have yeah. it in front yeah, of me so there's nothing paid out of that in that's January so that might be two, two months worth of payment exactly so no this is I understand that and and the other thing is because of the way that public service bills and we and we we you know, we have a lot of public service bills because there's a lot of different types of bills and some of them come in the beginning of the month, some of them come at the end of the month. Um, this might have included the payment from December's uh, bill, because usage bill, because mm -hmm. it rolls. I mean, it's a, it's a rolling bill. So, um, let's see, electricity, yes. So it says that there's $15,000 budgeted and $1,902.21 was spent. So that's more than, that's probably more than one month of that. I'm going to guess that it's at least two months, yeah. Okay. So this is the February report, and it's already the middle of March, and this was just run today. So it's going to include January and February at least. Might be three months worth, though. So it's, okay. this is for all the parks? The it's for all the parks, yeah. It's for, it's for Middlebush, it's for Inman, it's for everything that has electric for any purpose that, that okay. it gets Any built. lights or anything else? Mm -hmm. Okay. And the only reason I said that is because it said budget beginning two one, not. Well, that's what's, what's No, that's that's what you're seeing here. Right. The, the first that is the expenditures are the original, are, yeah. but the, the yeah. budget is approved. Beginning budget is what's available February right. first. Mm -hmm. Bob, is the insurance is that liability insurance? Last line. No, the insurance is the flood insurance for Van Wickle. That's that much. Just well, yes, it is. Little? It got reclassified by uh, the federal government, and it's and it's that our insurance. That's how much the flood insurance costs for that building. Is that that's just like so? If you have one of those houses along Eastern Avenue, that's depends on where you are. Yeah. Think about where the Van Wickle house is. It, right. it, yeah, it lies very low. <laughs> it's all, it's all, it has all. It has all to do with <laughs> elevation. <laughs> Too bad we couldn't raise it up a little. No, all of our other insurance is part of, we're a part of the joint insurance fund, the Central Jersey Joint Insurance Fund, so all of our liability insurance and all of our property casualty insurance is all the, the, through the GIF. That's just a, that's for everything that we own and, and that's not paid for by the, um, by the Open Space Trust. That's just paid out of the general fund. So Van Wickle's the only one that's in the Van Wickle's zone. the only one that we have flood insurance for, yeah. Mm -hmm. right. Is a, is the Army Corps of Engineers fi fi finished in Bound Brook? Um, yes, yeah, they've they're said they're it isn't yeah. worth doing anymore. Yeah, they're, okay. they're done in Bound Brook. Okay. Any other okay. questions okay. regarding the financial report? If not, motion. Uh, I make a motion we approve the financial report. Second. 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 Second
NAs, eyes have it, financial report is approved. Um, if you move to new business, uh, item A, control of invasive species. Okay, so um, I just put a few slides together. Um, it's not <laughs> nothing big, but I thought it would be easier to do it this way than to just look at the paper that was given to us. Um, so basically, okay, um, on February 28th, uh, Chris Williams, Bob, myself, um, 25th. Was it till 25th? Yes, yeah, 25th. Yeah, too much, because that had to be after hunting season. Oh, right, okay. So the 25th, the three of us met with uh, Brian O'Neill, who Chris had known. Um, he specializes in basically controlling invasive species in meadows and grasslands. That's what his company kind of specializes in. And because we're working on the update of the maintenance plan that was done back in 2004, uh, this kind of came up with New Jersey Audubon, and we've been talking about it for a while, you know, going backwards about you know, giving stewardship to those lands that we've made uh, an investment in. So we had that meeting and we did uh, talk about some solutions and I just kind of want to talk to you about them briefly. So why is it important to manage the grasslands? Well, because we've made an investment there, a very large investment, and we're lucky to have this, these areas which are really well, you know, they're well visited, they're hot birding spots, and they provide a lot of education to the public. Um, in order to maintain the ecological integrity and the biodiversity there, we have to put maintenance and repair into it the same way that we would do for a park. So basically, think about it like it's a park, and you know we have to repair you know the playground equipment sometimes, and some of the other structures there, and the infrastructure. We have to do the same thing with the grasslands, but the infrastructure there is the biodiversity and the native grasslands that you know we put time into planting. Um, the last maintenance plan was done in 2004 by New Jersey Audubon. We're working on updating that right now. It's expected to be done in September of this year, hopefully. The last plan gave us a lot of the foundation that we have now for maintaining the grasslands, and that includes doing the mowing of the one-third every year that we do. Um, there's been a lot of enhancement of the native vegetation. We've had a lot of interpretive signage put in. So based on the last plan, we've really achieved a lot of the goals that were set out. The new plan is gonna focus on even, you know, enhancing them even further, but it's really gonna focus on stewardship of those grasslands, making sure that they're maintained and making sure that invasives are kept out. Um, so in order to do this, we have to kind of look <coughs> at controlling the invasives that we have now, which, you know, I'm not an expert in, you know, plant by plant, but a lot of you guys are, and it was told to me that we have a serious problem, which was just uh, reiterated by Brian O'Neill, who we met with on the 25th. And New Jersey Obama. And New Jersey Obama. <coughs> so um, we had this meeting, I had the 28th, so it was actually the 25th. We went to both sites. We went to Negri and Bridgetown, all of us together. It was super cold that day and very oh, windy. Was very windy, windy yes. <laughs> um, so Brian, is, who's a specialist in this area, um, noted that, I believe it was NASI, correct me if I'm wrong. At, at Negri? No, yes, yes at Negri. It was Negri. one of the worst stands of that particular invasive that he's seen in a really long time. Um, so, you know. Nat <laughs> weed. Um, we also have a little problem with mugwort and cedar. Everybody knows what nap weed looks like. So I did not, but um, number one. I have to get a picture of it, but hold on. Yeah. Just search your phones. Okay. Yeah. So is it what's it called? Black? Is it black spotted? Yeah. Nap. No. It might be Japanese. Uh, All right, yeah, so it looks like this, right? Uh, okay, because I'm in. Okay, yeah. Do you see it? You want me to come out of my slides to show you? Or? Uh, if it's not difficult, but if okay. it is, then. Okay. All right. Mm -hmm. I'll show it at the end. Is that okay? Okay. Yeah, that's okay. What it looks like. Yeah. Um, hold on, let me get back into my. Yeah. Okay. So. Uh, we talked at length about, you know, what are some good solutions for this. In the updated maintenance plan, we're going to be talking about solutions for this, but we thought it would be a good time to bring both of these entities together to kind of give us a, a bunch of different solutions. Okay. Uh, 
sorry, someone went haywire with my computer. Give me one second here. Oh, this time, here we go. Okay, so after having said all that, um, they did submit a quote to us. Now again, I want you to keep in mind before we go further, further this is not an official, we're not seeking like, do you wanna do this right now? This is a quote that came our way. If it's something that anyone is interested in looking further into, we <coughs> will have to go out to bid for this. But this is a starting point, so you have somewhere to understand. This is a quote Brian. So this is a quote from Weeds Incorporated that Brian put forward. That's so his company. That's his company, yes. So he his estimate is 185 per acre. We believe that around 300 acres will have to be treated. So that's a total of $55,500. That takes care of both grasslands, for, is it now like a forever thing or it's it's gonna have to be done again? Is well, it, I don't know how long, but it'll probably have to be done again. Probably oh yearly. Right. Which is yearly, <coughs> probably yearly. Probably yearly. But the whole thing is, is that 300 acres, It's that's a, that's a large estimate. Right, that's a large estimate. And it's not been done there before, keep in mind. It's never been done at the grassland. So it, it is something that's gonna need, we need some kind of treatment there. What we've been doing is some spot treating um, and that's not really been effective because the mugwort and the knapweed and everything keeps moving forward, forward, forward. It's gonna take over the grasslands eventually and make it impossible for them to you know, thrive. Um, so this price includes the application of the treatment, spot treatment if necessary, and the chemicals themselves and the posting of the educational signs. Now again, this is one quote that was given to us, not saying, you know, if this is a project you're interested in, we may be able to get something you know, less, we might not. You know, it's just a starting point. You have some idea. But we only have one more meeting in April, at the near the end of April, and that right. starts in May. So uh, well, that's we the recommended treatment time. So in the so I'll go to the next slide. So in the next slide, basically, I go on to say that we're probably not going to make that recommended time frame this no, year. So the I options are either that. treat after the recommended time, which would still be effective, but it may not be as effective, okay. right. or wait until 2020, right. but we start working on it now because doing the RFP process is going to take some time. You know, getting the necessary approvals will take some time. Figuring out do we want to do 300 acres or we want to try and pare it back and do a phased approach, and all these things are going to take time. So, so yeah, that's we're definitely not going to be May. And Greg, Greg that includes yes. both. Yes. Um, it's only sure. half of each. So. Now, right. no. Right. Is there a reason that we don't do the do woods? Do your own we don't have to do the woods. We just do well, our own. And I don't want to be bogged in any more to, to it, but this is a huge, large scale uh, project where there's a lot of licenses that are required for spraying these types of chemicals. Also, making up the chemical solution. They may be able to actually do it, like the actual application. You have to have proper relationships. So, so, I had asked Bob a, a question about the um, the price. I asked him, does he does his own property? And he, no, and I, I, I contract. I used to do it when I was spraying. I contract out now, but I reached out to two. I reached out to three different parties, and two of them basically said, "No, we won't do it because it's not ag ground. It's another license and stuff to do medicinal ground for this." The third one I'm, I hasn't got an answer yes or no from, but I've been trying to get, he, Tara emailed me the stuff. I've tried to email it to him, and, and for some reason he can't get it by forwarding, so he's gonna come down another week and pick it up. You know, I'm gonna print it out and pick, right. and pick it up. Mm. But he, what he questioned was the cost be, is so high because they're talking about doing this with ATVs. Mm -hmm. it, it, the, the amount of water to get through this trash, to get down to the plants, because you're going through a lot of stuff we have a mode. He said, you need 30, 40 gallons to the acre. He says, you don't see how anybody can do a good job with an ATV. I'm not. I, I understand, I you know. This is what he does. I, know, I, I, I don't go out to bid. But yeah, but it's, it's just just, I'm just giving you comments what I got back yeah. from the yeah. guys who, you know. We want to know, if we want to move. I'm going to make a motion that we move forward with this, unless, so we can have a discussion on it. Well, basically, hold what on, I'm just presenting it, hold on. you. Just need a second. Okay. You made a motion. I well, you have to allow you to make a yeah. second. Someone wanted to make a second. If not, then we'll move on. All right, we'll move on. Good. I guess we're still working on it. Basically, we're just presenting info at this point, and it's just so you have an, an idea. Instead of you know saying to you, like, this is a great project, we should do it. Okay, now you have an, like a number and an idea of, of what to grab onto, and is it something that's of interest 
to look Definitely. into further, you know? And again, probably not gonna happen this year because May through June is like right now, so. T Tara, did Audubon, um, or do we ask Audubon even if we should start some of these grasslands over? In other words, you know, we either you know, plow them up or whatever, whatever, whatever you need to go back to square one and start some of these, you know, that are really bad over again and then maintain them from there. It might be cheaper to do it that way because I haven't seen the mugwort down at, Neg at, at Grigstown, but mugwort usually takes over everything and I think if you kill it, you're not going to have anything left anyway. Autobot, well the way that it was explained to us on okay. site was that these chemicals would kill the mugwort but wouldn't necessarily destroy everything else around it. The right. composition what, of the chemicals is there any grass where the mugwort is? That's the question. There, not where the mugwort is, but in surrounding areas. You know how it works, how, yeah, yeah, how, no, how okay. patchy. No, no. You've been out there, you know it's patchy. I don't, you know, that's that's a legitimate question. We should ask mm -hmm. ask them. But then we, you know, how much is it gonna cost to reseed it? Well, that, you, gotta, you gotta figure that out. Yeah, that's, that's not even a part of this. No, 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 no. We're no. We, what Bob just proposed was plowing everything under mm -hmm. and reseeding it. Yeah, you don't have to do it all one time. You do a section at a time or whatever, you know. But the question I got too on this, and I don't know what this all takes care of. Like on negative protein, there's a lot of cedar trees in it. Well, any, none of these chemicals will take care of cedar. Right, and he's going to take care of specific about cedars, didn't he? Like that. Yeah, but we've, be the, we've been knocking the cedars back without yeah. mowing. No, we're not mowing low enough to knock them back. Their cedars, and we're mowing every third year, so in three years' time, the cedars are going to be this big. We've got a real, like negative produce is a real cedar tree problem. Yeah, and he did mention that as well. And I think he said that the treatment for that would be mowing and to look at our mowing specs when we go out again about the type of blade to use and when and, and all that. So we can look at that. Bob, to your point about the use of ATVs, what's the alternative if you don't use Well, these ATVs other companies have trucks or big, you know, look like a tractor sprayer. Mm -hmm. Come the guys I use use big, tr big equipment. They, all, they carry 1,100 gallons and they put on 10 to 30 gallon, 40, whatever they need to put on per acre. And they run with a nurse truck. They got a 1,200, 1,300 gallon nurse truck comes with them. It but it's, it's different than, you know, this is a different beast. One of them, one of them used to do it, so they won't do it anymore because they do it with trucks. Because you're trying to run through stuff that's standing. You run through, take your car and run through some weeds, what happens to your radiator? That's why I question the ATVs and stuff that's standing also. I don't see how you keep from overheating. The other thing, the where's thing your price? You do it in Harris. Nobody gave you. The guy, the guy that was going to quote me, I, I can't. We, we haven't connected with the materials. Oh, so you didn't even get a quote. Well, no, no. Um, it cost me about it, for application for what I do. It costs about ten, twelve dollars an acre, depending on what they're doing. But you're not. What was that? One hundred fifty. One eighty-five. One eighty-five an acre with the chemicals and application. But you can you can imagine how wide. You know, my guys are using anywhere from ninety to one hundred twenty foot booms. ATV is not going to have, you know, they're going to be. Well, yeah, they, I think they have to use an ATV with this because of the types of sensitive grasses and wildlife that are there. You, you know, also that's have the, to be yeah. careful of you, the trucks may sink at negative. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's, it can be wet at times. Oh, for sure. I can't, yeah, no, no doubt about that. the top of the trucks will sink. Fran used to get stuck there every year. Right. <laughs> I remember one time we called Bob to pull us out. <laughs> yeah. I'm pretty oh. ignorant about herbicides, but I'm confused as if you're going to use herbicides to kill the weeds, mm -hmm. how long do you have to wait before we replant the grass we want well, there? They're not, you're not, don't have to wait. Hopefully the seed heads from the existing grass that doesn't kill, these, these chemicals don't kill the grasses we want. Okay, so they're specific. So yeah, specific yeah, That's what I needed to understand. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, it's okay. the chemical they make up to the composition of it. A certain, like a lot of that is included in the price as well. So it's not just spraying like a generic chemical. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Okay. yeah, this is a broad So I was thinking half life and how long we right. have to wait. Yeah. So again, I mean, I guess the question is, is this worth like even trying to put an RFP out for? Is it something that you want to think about for a little? I mean, that it's this is the information. When the uh, Autobahn maintenance plan comes back in September, they'll have some recommendations as well, so. I will add that the sooner the, we do it, 
the better off we're going to be because the, the nap we at Negri has gotten huge and it's just going to get bigger. So then we spot treat that bird. Yeah, that's right. Just for the sake, we'll just cover it with black frost and let it die. <laughs> You're talking 15 acres. Hey, what a lot of plastic so, I got. So, <laughs> would they use? Would they use all of these chemicals or just some of these chemicals? The combination of all of them. The way I read it. Yeah, and they, they like have certain. Cocktail. It's a cock. It's a yeah. right. It's a, talk, a cocktail. <laughs> Depending on what it is, yeah, they'll mix and match some of these. Um, some of them are really scary. Yeah. 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 Are these okay for groundwater? I mean, do they? No, the first uh, one how is how soluble is potential are they? groundwater yeah. should not be done near groundwater. groundwater. One of them has a very specific a groundwater. Well groundwater. Well, groundwater. Well, groundwater. None of them are carcinogenic. No. Almost. Um, not toxic. Well, There's well, other still things that are in. Yes. The second one it's says not be done near near water. Yes. Does are there wells nearby? I would uh, imagine there are right now. Well, that means they got two wells. wells. Yeah. Melba. Melba's well. Yeah. Melba's well. The uh, other thing. We got three wells. We got mm -hmm. ten houses in our own well. The other thing you should know is napweed is a good na nectar source, but it's a bad weed. <laughs> so the last time we, we treated. So you can't smoke it. No. <laughs> <laughs> Not pretty, yet. Pretty soon we can grow something. <laughs> anyway. Uh, the, the, the napweed is in pretty bad shape, so we should find out. So we're going to fertilize the napweed? <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> it's, it's on it's, tape. It's in the news, guys. <laughs> no, that the open space is going to grow. <laughs> oh, <that's laughs> no, no, no. no. <laughs> I was joking, bro. <laughs> <laughs> that's going to bring more people to the. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> More well, taking more revenue. Pick, more yeah. Pick, yeah. Pick your own. <laughs> and you guys thought taping the meeting was going to curve our <laughs> Well, Bob LaCourt's not here, yeah. so we're yeah. misbehaving. Curve your enthusiasm. <laughs> Tara, do you have more? I mean, do you have more slides or this? No, one? that was oh, it. Okay. I just tried to basically, the slides are based off of the quote that was submitted to us. That's the only information I have at this point. So, so what are you looking for now? Are you looking for. Well, I wanted to present it to you because we did take the time to have the meeting, and I guess what you know the well, thought is is um, if you're interested in, in like doing a project like this, it, again, it has so to go out to bid. So I would need to you know talk so to the it town sounds like was, you know, Chris, you would like to do this immediately. I but, would like to but, do it but, as soon as right. we could. But Ted, right. where yeah. Bob? And I forget who else. Was no, Bob there. wasn't. Oh, I was there. Oh, I couldn't make it. Uh, somebody was only there at Ridgetown. Uh, somebody was at, from the trails hole. I didn't go on. Oh, so Chuck somebody Martin. knows more about Chuck. this stuff than I right. do. What do you do? You think we can wait until next to twenty twenty? So I don't. I mean, well, we, I I don't think we should move ahead with. What do you know? Should about? we go out to bid? Well, no, 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 no. So stop. Idea. About let me just. So, what you should contemplate here as the advisory committee is: Do you, as an advisory committee? wish to make a recommendation to council to move forward with going out to bid to award a contract to provide these services or not. That's that's what you should be contemplating. Mm -hmm. And that's okay. what you should be discussing. And once we do that, if the a if, win, when a winning bid or whatever you want to call it comes in, are we required to accept? So well, if we pursue uh, it, how does it, just how does that work? So you have to write the specifications. We write the, specific I I the specifications there have to be no written, way. and there has to be an amount of money budgeted for that purpose, and you have a not to exceed on that budget. And if you if your bids come in, and there there's one the low bid is below what your budgeted amount is, then you can award a contract. If it's over budget, then it'll. It, and, but understand that the township council will have to make that decision. I don't think yeah. we have enough information right now to. Yeah, I, I, to I think direction. I think Audubon is the expert on this, and I think we should wait for the report. Audubon is there. Um, whatever, they will be, whatever we can get. It. Yeah, Audubon was with us. They will be giving their report in September. With I don't know if it's going to include you know this level of you need to use these uh, herbicides or whatever. I, I don't know what their report's going to say, but yes, that's absolutely. Important. I mean, but this what this was just to put it in perspective. Mm -hmm. This was one vendor making a recommendation on certain 
herbicides to, to remove the invasives that you want removed. Um, your bid specifications won't necessarily have what, what we will use unless you feel comfortable enough to make a recommendation on what should be used. You don't necessarily take what should be used from one vendor. Um, your bid specifications are, we have all of these things on all of these acres that we want removed and you give us a bid on what you will do to remove it. You know, that's, that's really what, what you're looking for here. Uh, Chris. Okay. I just want to say that we spend a lot, we spend a lot of money every year on mowing and reseeding all the parks and, and things. We hardly spend any money at these things. This is going to yeah. cost, yeah, this is going to cost some money. And, and I, being the only one that knows nature, these, these weeds are going to take, all, take over. Do anybody else know about the weed, about napweed and what is going to happen? Because what napweed does, it sends out chemicals and kills the grasses around it. Uh, but we're paying but for the what's the cycle? I guess really what it co comes down to is well, we have say, the option to wait until September for the Audubon report, it is now March. What's the life cycle that will exponentially kill more grass? It's you understand it, what I'm saying? Yeah, it's, it's not a well-worded question. I apologize. I don't know. Is it spring better or fall? Is what you're asking? You no. What I'm back. asking is if the life cycle is an entire year for the for whatever um, invasive species to double in size. Let's say if it takes a year to double in size. We've got from March to September. Well, gee, maybe we better move faster. If it takes, you know, three years to double in size, then maybe we can wait for the Audubon report. My experience uh, is that I observed about three or four acres last year. Now we've got ten acres. Three or four a year ago. So it's, it's more than triple. doubled in a year. Yes. Okay, that helps to know. Yeah. Sorry, we <laughs> but if if just going by what Weeds Inc. said, if the uh, opportune time is May or June. We're never going to get it. You're never going to get it for this year, so let's wait for the report you know, and I work on it. I feel bad about discouraging having the meeting during the hunting season, because that if we'd gone ahead and had the meeting in December, we, mm -hmm. we would have been having this discussion in January. Griffin might have also gotten shot. But I'd say it's supposed to be in the safety area, but he couldn't yeah. uh, He says rather <laughs> What's one councilman? <laughs> <laughs> There's eight more behind. There's eight more. There you go. He's got to protect the mayor, that's all. Yeah. 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 Seven more. <laughs> <laughs> on, on that playing field, you're all equal, Mr. Mayor. <laughs> <laughs> They're so shooting at you. The they don't think that they matter. Uh, first among equals. I'm not so sure that's a good thing. Yeah, but the mayor is the smallest the target. Yeah. 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 This is true. Yeah. And we have a meeting, and you go out for RFQ in the fall. Can you do anything in the fall, or no. does this automatically push it to next spring? Uh, I, that I don't know. I, the, I'm not once, an expert. So I'm this conversation is effectively pushing any action out one year. Basically, yes, because yeah. once it once it goes to seed, just forget it. You can't do anything. I don't so think we'll make it this time, but so it's good to think about it in advance instead okay. of, you know. So okay. are we kind of in agreement that we may as well wait to the major the well, Audubon well, If we can't execute anyway, we might as well do it the right way and do it in the okay. fall and do it there next year. So okay. We have a meet discussion on the, about this in October, I assume. Mm -hmm. so that, where that nap weed is, we may have to replant that field. So next item on the agenda is updates for the meeting with the uh, DEP, Department of Environmental Protection, uh, regarding hunting and six mile run. That's you, Bob? It can be. Well, you're all there. three of us were there, so yeah, I mean, I, I, so yeah. certainly Tarek can, oh, or Bob, I don't, you know, I'll chime in if I need Yeah, Bob, go ahead, because you, uh... Bob, all right. Hey, Bob? For the uninitiated, can I you start with three. what can be done right now so that I, you know, sometimes when you have these conversations, like I don't really understand what actually can be done now and what may change or what could change. In, in reference it to, to, to what? hunting. This okay. is only about six mile run. We right. met with the fish and wildlife representatives and the DEP representatives regarding expanding hunting on the six mile run property. It has nothing to do with anything else, so this is just listen. Okay. Right. Yeah. This is the same as what's up there, same map. Um, they're 
there was approximately 800 acres that was open to bow hunting and six mile run. You're talking previously. about the state park. The state park. They're yeah. gonna oh, they're gonna increase that to, to like 2,100, 2,200 acres. They're basically opening up 90 percent of the park to hunting. So the uh, tripling of just bow. Now now m nine, again she's got one area down um, from. South Little Bush Road parking lot that they have with crossing Snyder's to the Canal Road and out to Saddam Road that she wants to open up to gun hunting also. Okay. So uh, there's some proposed parking lots. There's already some established parking mm -hmm. lots. Um, I, just, I guess it's a good thing. The only thing I, I caution is she wants to do this on a permit basis and I think Fish and Wildlife is going to buck her on that to no end. Okay. And I don't, you know, whether she gets her way with permits or not, I don't know. Um, all I know is after our meeting, the head of Fish and Wildlife kiboshed my shoot the kill permit Good. for so ten, this would for be ten state, days. State permits instead of <laughs> local permits. Yeah, so, well, so, so the so the township would have absolutely nothing to do with this. Correct. We went to go advocate on behalf of the township for increased hunting on the state park property that is six mile run because of the the, the deer herd and the size of the deer herd and the need to uh, to thin the herd as they say so and it, and it was and and they had I think that one obviously they knew why we were coming because we told them why we were coming but they had obviously also had conversations about this specific property previously and and a rep so you know, this is a, this is a unique property as far as the state of New Jersey is concerned because of how the owner the property is owned but versus how it's managed, this is not your your typical state park. It's not really a state park. It's property that's owned um, by actually the New Jersey Water Authority. Right. Not not not. I thought it was owned by it is, it's it is owned. owned by the New Jersey Water Supply oh, really? Authority. Okay. That is who owns the land, and the New Jersey Water Supply Authority is in a, in effect an offshoot of the Department of Environmental Protection. And the property is managed by the New Jersey State Park System, oh. and it is it is sup the superintendent and the staff that manage the DNR Canal State Park also manage this property. So it has a lot of kind of hands in the pot, so to speak, um, and and we were able to put all of those hands at the same table, which is not a, a, a kind of a rare occurrence in mm -hmm. this day and age. Mm -hmm. Um, and they were all very supportive of the idea of expanding. They're going to look to expand some of the parking areas and add access areas to parts of this, the property that are currently inaccessible um, or, or blocked off and, and, and old roads and trails not maintained currently that they'll be able to give areas for the hunters to, to park when they're going to, to hunt this property that, that currently they don't have access to. Where, where were some of the um, additional parking spaces? So um, they, they talked about the end of Meadow Avenue down at, there's a house on the dead, on the driveway that led oh, to, the house. Uh, yeah, there's okay. a drive, the so, so, so yeah, so you see the red P is the proposed parking, the black P is the existing parking. Um, trying to, to put it in perspective as, as to where those places are. Um, and like I said, one of the areas that we talked about was there, there was a house, the state tore the house down, it was way off in the woods, off the dead end of Meadow Avenue in Franklin Park. Um, they could, uh, and that could be a controlled access point where it was open during the season and closed when it, the season is closed. So, 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 so mm -hmm. our meeting, the update on that is, Bob, they want to took your recommendation. And they're going to go and do the other no, side. The other the, side. The, right. Yeah, so that, and that's so, the, so what Bob just said is we had a, part of the discussion okay. was there, there would, there would in all likelihood be some concern on the part of some residents who live at the dead end of Meadow Avenue. Um, they, they had asked actually for the bollards and chains to block off the driveway because people were going in the back um, several years ago and we did block it off. But if the other end of Meadow Avenue is township owned and, and sewage authority owned property and they could certainly make a parking area there that would give just as, uh, the access would be just as good from that point. So I'm glad to hear they took my advice on that. So this is Consulado Fathers here. Yes. Yeah. So they talked they, about Consulata as well, um, and the possibility of access from Consulata. The truth is, 
that um, we're, we don't know where we'll be at with Consolata, but the area under the, the, the power lines will remain owned by the township after the, the Board of Education takes over the, the building portion of the land. And we could certainly create a parking area with access off of Cordelou Lane but they're there putting, to get in. But they're proposing to do that at Roger Erdick's house? Exactly. So, so there's, she there's said one very close that they're already proposing right. an access point, and there's an access point at the soccer fields Correct. just to the north of Consolata already. So there, there's probably not a great deal of need for an access point at Consolata. And it might just be better to avoid that um, given the, the proposed use there, uh, just to have you know, not, not, I mean, it's way off in the back, it's, it's out of sight, there's not students <coughs> that are proposed at there, so, but still, there's just, it, there's already, uh, I think it covers. There is another spot, um, yeah, those, those two spots. Um, one is uh, off of Blackwell's Mills Road. That's proposed, that's, that's so that proposed. House, that won't happen until the house gets knocked down. Right, and that's, that's just up on the left-hand side from South Middlebush Road. Right. They're proposing that as a parking area for Hunter. And uh, and then all the way over on uh, Memorial Plaza. Uh, yeah, by by uh, Van Cleef Road. By Van Cleef. Yeah. Don't you? Uh, maybe not where the ugly red house is. Maybe no, where that's the, where it is. Is it where the ugly red house used to be? Used to be. Okay, that's what she was the old Van Cleef no. cow farm a barn. No. No, she she went. To okay, that's that's a better spot in my opinion. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. so that's good. Just kind of cut the trees around, take a park there, and go right into. Don't the you farm these fields now? Yes. Uh, some of this is going to impact me more because we're going to, we're going to be guys dragging deer through the bean fields more now than ever because they're opening some spots up. And even though these parking areas are, you know, better than what they had, but they're going to go from point A to point B the easiest. So fish and but wildlife. That's why, that's why they want. She wants to have the permit thing so right. to know who's where. The fish yeah. and wildlife position is that if the if the land has a deer population and there's a tree line that can be hunted from along the, the then it will be open to hunting. The Fish and Wildlife is, is really looking to get this property com as open as it can be to hunters. And that's why there's, I think, a little bit of a conflict with the permit versus the open public hunting lands because Fish and Wildlife do doesn't want there to be the perceived restrictions on the land that maybe a permit process might entail. So, the, so the other proposed lot is off of Sinclair Boulevard. Right. Yeah. And she'd like to have the Sinclair one she hoped to have open for All September. Uh, the Meadows one she hoped to have for the fall. Yep, yep. And then, yep. The um, other way. Yep. Down. Down. right there, there you go. But I guess there's some, I guess the town's got a little, I don't know what the whole, we gotta look into the little helper a little bit on that one because I guess- Sinclair the, Boulevard. Yeah, Sinclair Boulevard because we gotta look at who's what, what easement with the road and stuff there. Yeah, they, they, that's a that's a very 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 strange right of way, and, and I don't. It was it's kind of like in a horseshoe. I, it, 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 I don't need to explain it here, but a hook. Yeah, a hook. Oh. Exactly. Ted right. uh, A uh, lot of hunters use Negri to hunt across the street. Yes. Yeah. Where it's black now. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Absolutely. They use the Negri parking lot and then just walk across the street mm -hmm. and go into the field. Uh, she didn't mark that because she knows because it's already there, so they'll yeah. be able to use that they to know access that. the okay. the park. Yeah. yeah absolutely. They were very helpful, though, I thought, at least. I know some people were. Yeah, and actually, and I, I wound up having a, another conversation with the uh, with the Fish and Wildlife Director, um, or Deputy Director, I guess she is. Well, what, um, they, who'd you have, Golden or Harry? No, the woman. Uh, oh, Carol Stanko. Yeah, Carol Stanko. Head yeah. biologist. Yeah, so I had a conversation with her last week, and we talked about a couple other things that I had to talk to her about, but we wound up coming back to this again, and she said that they were very optimistic that, that all of these things that need to be in place for next season will be in place. They're, they're pushing. So, you know, she, she um, Farm Bureau's been working on some stuff too and they had a meeting with, with Larry and Carol last week and it didn't go very well. No. Um, but anyway, um, that's about it on this. They're, they can say the number, the park office down here knows the number of hunters was not gonna increase. The, the gun hunting area might bring a few more hunters in they're open a lot of stuff because they know there's guys hunting all over here anyway with the bow. Right. And the net increase of hunters, I think, is going to be middle school. But with the reporting, Bob, is she going to, are they even going to ask? Is that what we, 
what you were talking about. Yeah, remember? so I mean, they'll still have to do, check the yeah. gear. So, so we'll that'll be, able, be we'll, good. So right? what, what if we could get, and that's the next thing that we need to talk to them about is to make Six Mile Run a separate reporting area for mm -hmm. Fish and Wildlife to check gear, then we could get better reporting on Six Mile Run. Right? We did yeah. ask there were, that. I, I got a deprivation permit that. for July to December on the, on the fields that I farm in Six Mile Run. And my nephew shot 71 deer in that time frame, all night. And the, the division was not happy about that. Because it's all, you did it where there was no hunting. I said, we did it where it was all hunting already. And so he, I had applied for a permit and it was, he, he put a stop on it for 10 days because he wasn't happy about it. And, but I, he had to, rel he relinquished and let me have it till September the 1st. But in my state, in fact, the park office and I went through it yesterday. My lease says through parks and forestry that no public, no private hunting, public recreational hunting, and I can get a deprivation permit with their okay. Uh -huh. So, signed lease, signed document that says, yes, I can do this, because they gave me the okay, right. and he's just grandstanding. He's retiring in a month, so hopefully the next director is a little more understanding. Because our conversation with Fish and Wildlife, the COs and stuff who issue these things is, you will reapply in August, we'll see what happens. Because the crops are still on the field in September, October, November, you know, sometime into December, the deer are still eating. It's, there's my, my permits specific to, or all farmers are specific to the fields. Right. You know, so. Well, you're, 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 in the office, though, has been really great, right? What's that? I mean, we have to give, yeah, we have to give her props because she's been really good. Stephanie? Well, Stephanie, yeah, the local park owner, Stephanie, I don't know if that's she for the life sure of me, I don't know her last name. Yeah. Or she made sure she. They said we at the meeting. They said we're going to get this to you by your your open space meeting, and mm -hmm. they did. Yeah, and that's yeah, yeah. She I, I went down and picked this map up yesterday. Yeah, so they, they have yeah. been, and I think try. they're they're looking and you know trying to help us out, even if it's not our program. They're looking to help the township out with some of the deer right, right, Does this right. does this have any impact on our our other hunting properties, or like if you're uh, dealing with uh, our hunting properties? Yeah. You, you mean like that? Like, does it siphon off people? Not or? Really. No. Yeah. No. Mm -hmm. no. But it will do. The only, you know, the only, the only the property that it really, so fr from a deer hunting point of view, the only property that, that could be maybe, maybe see some impact on the deer on our property versus the deer on Six Mile Run is Negri and Post. I mean, that's really the only uh, property that we have hunting on that Six Mile Run. Well, yeah, and, but I'm not saying it does. I'm saying no, that's no, no. the only one that's really even adjacent. Well, the, the, the biggest it's impact this might have, and this is good for me, is that uh, Gunther, Negri, uh, Gunther and Dunn's. Right, but those aren't, aren't open to the general public. Right, no, right, right. right. They're but just the farmers are correct. hunting those right. properties. The, the tenant that's properties what I'm talking about. about right. Those that we allow permit hunting on. This won't have an effect on. The only yeah. one is Negri. How many Western dozen people hunt that property? Right, it's not going to change anything. No, it's not going to They've been parking in our parking lot going across the street ever since the parking lot's been in existence. So it's not, you know, like you say, my gut and Stephanie's gut is too, the girl from the park office, is that the, other than the gun area, we're not going to gain a whole lot of hunters. Yeah. Any other questions regarding? I have a hunting yeah. question. We had a meeting last night with the Environmental Commission. We have a, actually a new member who is a, uh, a new, relatively new farmer in town. She owns an organic farm, like 13 acres near Ted. And uh, she asked if, she could allow hunting on her property because she's having problems, coyotes and everything else. And if so, what what does she need to do to make that happen? It's all, it's all on them, it's her property. It's her property, it's, it's her about property. 13 acres. She has to get a degradation Does she need permit. a permit? Like the buck? No, no she, she said no, she's allowing hunters on her property. She just lets property people yeah, hunt on her property. That's it. If she right. wanted that's to hunt the easements, I guess, right? And that's what like, I said, what's the nearest residence? Earlier, so if she, want, yeah, yeah, say, okay, if, if she wants to allow them hunting, that's it. Yeah, if she wants to allow hunting during the hunting season, so be it. It's her property. She can do what she wants. That's perfect. Any other if she wants to do it outside of it, it's all there. Any other questions related to the? It's up to her. Any other questions related to the state property, the six mile run property? How many acres again? They're going to. They're going to. It's going to be around twenty two hundred acres for her. This is all in. in twenty two of the twenty five hundred. Right. Right. It's going to be almost all hundred. Yeah. It's good. Really good. Thanks for the update, Bob. No Thanks for, for doing it. Very 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 very
handed down. Okay, so I was like, I go first. Yeah, uh, so being handed down, like, um, <laughs> so pedestrian, um, so we're under old business, pedestrian bridge at intersection of Eastern right. Avenue and JFK Boulevard. So there's nothing to report because the county has not met. I talked with Tom Pacino from Somerset County today, and Tom said they're meeting with Mr. Luce on Thursday. So until the county meets, I mean, this committee's recommendation was for him to go see if the county would um, be interested in partial funding of this project. Um, What's the over so under on it? Hold on one second. Yeah, I, I mean, I, you can read it online, but yeah. I don't know. Mayor, did you want to like, just maybe give an update on the council? Or? Sunday, the bridge? Yeah, you can see here. Uh, the council says um, go ahead with John um, talking to the county about the bridge. That, that's all, you know, we didn't say what the deal would be, anything like that, just go find more information. Yeah. Pretty much what this is what we're talking yep. about. Yeah. Uh, and they're really new. Yeah, we took your recommendation. Okay. Yeah. Any the, other the, questions? The new number I heard recently is 800, between 800 and 900,000. Updated number. Yeah, and I, I don't want to discuss like what my threshold would be or no, no, how I just, much I would let, let the new number out. Yeah. Wow. But that is a large number. That's a ridiculously large number. So, uh, Bob, how can you equate, if our concession stand at Middle Bush costs 500, four mm -hmm. something, say 500,000, mm -hmm. where is the money, if his number is correct, like the first number that was floated is 500, 600. Well, I, so I it's can't, an estimate from 2010 from an engineer firm no, was no, 600 saying, years old. I can't, yeah, nine years I, old. I would think that a bridge would be considerably less. Well, the, bro the Brooklyn Bridge would cost a whole lot more than $500,000. <laughs> it depends on the size of the bridge. No, no, yeah, I'll sell it to you for free. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you can't, but your, 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 take your logic doesn't I'll work take that. here. Okay. It doesn't. I mean, it, so construction is, is, you can't say, well, a, a concession stand costs $500,000. Why does a bridge cost $800,000? Depends on the bridge, depends on the concession yeah, stand, and they're totally different. Yeah. I mean, there, there's nothing at all similar at all to them. And it's, one, it's, one of the things is that, as you know, a bridge nearby got washed away, so they're going to want to make this thing absolutely mm -hmm. rigid if they build it. As and, I understand and, it, all they have to do is put the right bolts in. And, and, <laughs> and uh, yeah, they didn't have stainless steel bolts. Do we know what the bridge? Over in um, Colonial Park. I, know, I don't know off the top of my head, but it's a totally different bridge. It's, so it's, it's much shorter. Like the span is much way. shorter. This has to go over a, a, a drainage ditch and a marsh area. It, it, it's it, just it, it, it's apples and oranges. It's no, again, it, yeah. You know, I, I think I think that it's just right up by the canal broom. There's a there's a bridge what a half mile away. Or is it a mile? Well, we had this discussion last month. Are we going to have it again? No, 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 no. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, to answer your question, he yes. wasn't there. All right, move on. I wasn't at, I wasn't <laughs> at that move meeting. Move on. <laughs> so, uh, you got three minutes. <laughs> any, any other uh, comments or questions regarding the pedestrian bridge farmer's market? Um, we're working on the farmer's market and getting some vendors in. Uh, it's going to be Saturday, June 1st is opening day through mm -hmm. Saturday, September 21st, 10 to 2. Um, and we're trying to bring a lot more community groups in as well, and we're having some like theme days, and Robert Wood Johnson is going to come and have a health and wellness day, and they're going to bring their mobile screening uh, mobile, so that'll be exciting. Um, so just working on it. This was brought up at, well, you, were you going to say that, Ted? Well, yeah. Just, oh, go ahead. <laughs> what you were going to say, what right. I think we were going to say. At the Environmental Commission meeting last night, and in connection with the proposed electric vehicle show, the question was asked, do we have food, are we gonna have a food truck at the farmer's market? Yes, we are. We're working on getting a variety of them in. So right now I'm, I have like a few that are kind of like in various stages of saying yes or no. So <laughs> the goal though, the Empanada Express people will come back, so they're in for sure. But we reached out to an ice cream truck and an ice truck and um, someone that makes, um, it's like smoothies and so we have a bunch of requests out there but yes we're going to have food trucks because one of our members is big on electric cars and we're actually going to do in april do a mm -hmm. sort of a demonstration but well, that would we, be great we, april but we april also 23. thought mm -hmm. because we're not allowed to have food at that so it came up if there's vendors that want the farmer's market you said there's theme days mm -hmm. so we recommended one of the theme days 
bring in the uh, oh, yeah. electric cars. That would be really cool. We actually have a sustainability or green day, so I'll tell mm -hmm. you when that is. That would okay. be excellent. Yep. Yeah, that would be really, really nice. No, Thank that's you. Perfect. Well, right now, the uh, the um, April 23rd is the day that we were going to have the electric vehicles charging station, the grand opening, oh. but that's on a Tuesday, so that's not The that's idea not was to have it on Tuesday before council meeting and at least get council people to go. Well, I'm sure we can figure something out, though. Maybe one of our vendors can come to you instead or something like that. Feeling is, if it's 5:30 to 7, that would be good to have across the street. Yeah, I'm sure we can figure something out. I'm sure we can. What was the date again? It was April. Tuesday. April 23rd. Okay. This is here in this here in the municipal complex. They're going to be being constructed now. This is the yeah. Well, the charging station is now that they're still you know, waiting to, uh, to, uh, oh, to okay. pave it yes. over. Oh, great. That's the same thing as Harbor, Harbor Day, right? Oh, it's the 23rd is a Tuesday. I don't oh, okay. Know. Yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll reach out and I'll let you know if I find so anybody. The next okay. item of business is a yeah. maintenance plan for we already went over so that basically. We're good. Yeah. Okay. So um, I had some family old business and then I can file an item. Um, I mentioned this two times, one late last year and then in January, um, that the geophysical, geophysical fluid dynamics lab in Princeton, essentially what they do is um, any report that gives a forecast about, I'll just say climate change, you know, 2030, 2050, 2100, a lot of that data, a lot of those data models are crunched um, uh, in Plainsboro. So across from Sandoz there. So I had mentioned to this committee if there was an interest, if I was able to get a, uh, a tour and a meeting with some of the scientists, whether members of this committee may be interested in attending such a, a session. They did get back to me um, saying that they, um, can tentative, they can tentatively line up three of their scientists to give the following presentations. The first scientist would give an overview of climate change and climate models. The second speaker would address the new National Weather Service forecast model. So, um, you probably, and a few of these storms you've probably seen, they say the European model, the US mm -hmm. model, and the European model you sometimes ends up predicting where the storm is going. Well, the Princeton lab has uh, created a model that hopefully will be um, better than the European model in predicting things. So, they kind of came up with the formulas, things like that. They, this is not the National Weather Service. There, but they did the, a lot of the European models run they take twice as long to run they, they're intended to be more accurate but they only can run them twice a day whereas the American models they run four times a day um, just the um, and then the third item um, the speaker would talk about extremes um, hurricanes heat drought So anyway, they, if there is an interest, I wanted to, if you could let me know, April 10th, the 11th, the 15th, or the 16th is what they have uh, available. The 16th me. is our OSAC meeting, just so you know. That evening. Oh, this would be during the day. Oh, okay, yeah, clear. just so you're aware. Yeah, yeah. sorry about that. No. What's the name of it again? Um, the Geophysical Fluid well, Dynamics well, Laboratory. We're in the field. <laughs> And if and if I wouldn't get a sense of how many open space members would be interested, if you can. So speak. what time during the day? Yeah. I if you guys let me know what works better for you. I mean, if it's in the afternoon, the morning, I'll. So all the free well, Arnie's retired, so he can go in. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he can start early and stay late. <laughs> yeah, he still sleeps in. Yeah, that's that's why he's looking for something to do around. Right. <laughs> yeah. 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 No earlier than no 10 earlier than 10 a.m. <laughs> <laughs> April 11th in the afternoon. April 11th. Yeah, the 15th okay. is tax day. Uh, uh, I don't think he's going to have to call anybody wait until the last minute. So the, what I was going to ask nice. is, I told them around <laughs> five to eight to send it in people send would it attend. Chat. So if there's not enough members of this committee that can attend, I wanted to widen the invite to the township manager's staff and the mayor have um, potentially inviting the council 
or any of the any of the other committees. So the April eleventh is a Thursday. Is that the year? During the day. In the afternoon. So much for the afternoon. And where is it going to be? Um, Plainsboro. Plainsboro. Straight off the route one. The plasma physics lab. I think that's further, uh, further in. This is right yeah. up front yeah. here. Right. Yeah, right. Close yeah, to uh, the Forestal Center. Yeah, the Forestal Center. Thank you. Okay. Near the new Lifetime Gym, mm -hmm. or the old Princeton Science Campus, or where they, I think they did the Manhattan Project. I think. Uh, they so. they had a reactor over in Plainsboro at right. one time. Yeah, yeah they. I think that's where Lifetime's gym is located. I don't think people know that. <laughs> they do now. It was right next to the railroad tracks at one time. So I don't, okay. I don't think it's like next to the railroad Oh, uh, okay. So it is by the, the uh, plasma. Yeah. I'm interested. Okay. So one. Yeah. Anyone else? Two. I can't. I would love to go, but I can't commit. So. Okay. Same here. It goes off the railroad tracks. Yes. Would you like to go? Yeah. 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 Yeah.
pushed and pushed and just so not. Even, that, even if they did that property from Welch's land, it's a dead end, right? I mean, that's that, that, that that's, a, that's a possible. Yeah, yeah. Like, we got to look at it. He sent me maps and like, you can't see it. I guess he printed it out. Yeah. And he can't see it on town. So I'm going to reach out to him and say, because in his email, he said, yeah, I can print this out for you. That, that's us that's at the end. Of because they could, for the ag side of it, he, all they needed for me to, okay, there, with the search insurance certificate, he had that within 10 minutes of what he yeah. said. Yeah. That's all he needed. <laughs> <laughs> so it's, 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 it's a long time coming. I worked yeah, my butt great. off on that one. Yeah, and I guess I pushed and pushed and pushed. And we, they have a new caretaker, Hutchison, and she's really, oh, great. yeah, she was all about saving the forest and doing something and the base did from, so it, it full steam ahead. Excellent. I just want to make one more, more comment from my on the kind of grasslands. They, New Jersey Audubon thinks we should burn the grasses. They, they, you know, I think the forest department can come in. So we, 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 we I mean, that's, that's actually, so Karen and I were talking about that while you were having okay. a discussion about the, the, the grasslands and the possibility of a controlled burn. So if that's if something that Audubon may recommend. That's if if that's the case, then when they have that regulation comes out, they need to get on that with the Forest Service sooner than later because it's just, that's just how they work it. Because I inquired one time about it. You got to be, we are already on that. You to come and do it. Would that be something that would be a lot cheaper than? Uh, <laughs> yeah, it would be free. Uh, it would be free. Right. We don't know. Yeah. 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 You don't let the Forest Service say, hey, that's my forest. We're not doing it. No. The problem is, is you. At Negri is a problem because of the high tension wires. You can't burn wow. near the high tension yeah. wires. Yeah. But everywhere else, you can do it. Yes. Mm -hmm. Very good. All right. Yeah. Um, just to uh, add a couple of committee reports. Um, the first one we already talked about the April 23rd electrical electric vehicles um, charging station. Uh, but on May 6th, during the regular environmental commission meeting, we will have a Rutgers professor give a presentation to the public on ticks and Lyme disease in council chambers. What's Somebody the date of that? Pardon me? May 6th. Six. May 6th. Six. Okay. Somebody Monday that night. Ted uh, Monday will, night. got for us. What time? 7 o'clock. It's I think it's going to, we, we talked about having it videotaped so they could be run on the TV. Usually we do. Yeah, I, yeah. I talked to Ted. Then, then, then we talked about this, didn't you and I? Have a conversation about the availability of the yeah. right. So and yeah. and I talked to Justin, and we would have the videographer there to videotape it. Excellent. Then it can be just run through the summer on sure. Channel Twenty Five. Mm -hmm. Great. Um, so any other old business? Do I, do I on committee not? reports yet? You still on, are you still on committee reports? Oh, did you have something? Uh, no, 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 I do. Uh, I do for the ad committee. If he's done, <laughs> okay. For you, Bob, um, I'm done. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> Um, the Act Committee is hopefully going to host on our April meeting a get together with the town farmers on fire inspections. Mm -hmm. We're required by the state now, all farms are required to have their inspection um, once a year. And uh, so the local fire, I want to call them fire marshal, whatever. Uh, it's, it's our the Office of Fire Prevention. It's oh, fire Office marshals. of Right. The, yep. the, the, the young man who's going to be doing the inspections. Uh, Rake Sadam and I met with him here, and he'd like to, we're trying to put together a list of farms and have him come in. He wants to put a presentation on, to, so, the, so the farmers know what to expect. Now, I've seen one by the state fire marshal, and it, 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 everybody's got their own take on how to do it. Franklin's, I, I had my walkthrough the other day, and we know what we got to do, and I'm going to, you know, tomorrow, today, hopefully, my seven fire extinguishers are in, and I can go hang them, and, but, you know, and, and every... Franklin's doing a great job on how they want to handle these. They really are compared to some other towns and stuff. They're working with the farmers, and that's why you want to bring everybody in as many as you can. It's okay. This is what slide presentation of what we want to do. Anybody want to come? Oh, you know, we get it done. You're all more welcome to come. We meet here. Anything else? Any other items? Three, four, ten in the morning. <laughs> Just for you to wait the 10 15, as long as you bring the call. Bring call. Is the recreation department doing anything? Mr. Mim, mm -hmm. is Rec doing anything? Uh, what we're doing now, uh, we're uh, doing our summer program, and we are trying to figure out uh, the fee for the summer program and also fee waivers. Yep. Uh, we are discussing the, uh, the bathrooms, how we want them uh, open. 
uh, if the city opened and closed, they're going to cost us a fee. Uh, we're trying to work out a system now for the use of those bathrooms up there. Which bathrooms? Uh, Middlebush. Okay. Middlebush right now, yeah. Uh, but the biggest problem right now is that uh, concession stand, uh, uh, what the fees we want to charge the use of the concession stand uh, at Middlebush right now. But the biggest problem, like I said before, is that uh, everybody want to know how we're going to have uh, usage of the bathrooms. Working on some kind of procedure. Uh, Pop Warner is going to pay for to use the uh, the concession stand. Yeah. No, Pop Warner is oh, not going to pay to use no. the concession okay. stand. No. Okay. You there's a municipal ordinance that waives fees for certain organizations. Pop Warner is one of them, so they don't pay a rental fee oh, okay. for park um, amenities. They don't pay for the field rentals. No. Um, so, but I think Pop Warner, there was soccer, <laughs> either it's the baseball league, either it's the Boy Scouts, either it's the Board of Education. I mean, so no, they're, they're not going to Pop Warner and soccer will receive a key. They already they get a key yeah. for the bathrooms already. Yeah. So right. when there's functions, practices, and games, Pop Warner, soccer already have keys to the bathrooms to get them to unlock the bathrooms when the functions are being held as the games are being held and practices. Mm -hmm. And we're scheduling people to clean them afterwards, or cleaning, uh, cleaning yes. is done by the township. Paid for by open space money. The yes. cleaning is done by the township. That means yeah. township employees. Which means so we there pay is for nobody it. paying your oh, okay. township of Franklin is paying for the bathrooms to be cleaned. But the main concern is that for the public to use the facilities. So that's what our concern is right now. How do we? How do we regulate that? Uh, do we have it open all day? No. You know? Uh, no, they're open for when there's practices or games at those facilities, then the bathrooms are open. Yeah, the, the coach will, or whoever's in charge will have a key. They yep. open the bathrooms when the events the start. The bathrooms are not open generally during for the public during the day or uh -huh. when there's not no events at the parks. Uh, Otherwise, okay. then we would have to have staff. We don't have park rangers. Right. There's no one to go lock them at sundown to go lock up the bathrooms. They're, they're, they're when they're, the parks are uh, supervised for events uh -huh. or someone rents the facilities, they get a key to the bathrooms, they rent the picnic pavilion at Williams, or they rent the picnic pavilion mm -hmm. at Inman, or they rent the picnic pavilion at Middlebush. They can, they can also get a key to the bathrooms, they unlock it and they lock it when they're done and turn in the key and get your deposit back. Mm -hmm. One, one, one more same right thing for Catalpa? Mm -hmm. It will be the same thing for Catalpa, yeah. One more thing. I have a woodcock walk this Friday. You starting saw it at on 7, the calendar. <laughs> starting at 7 a.m. This Friday and next Friday. I was out there last week and I saw a lot of woodcock. So hopefully it's nice. 7 p.m.? Oh, okay. I thought I thought it was you can make that one. Yeah. <laughs> 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 I always do. I saw it advertised for 7 p.m. Yeah, 7 p.m. Yeah, it is. Isn't it two, Friday? two Fridays in a row? Yes. Who's yeah. our rep? Is it Melville on the trails or is it you, Greg? That's me. Oh, it's you. Oh, I'm sorry. John is on the all wrong. Sorry. Yeah, Any updates? Our last meeting, yeah. Our update this week was pretty much what we had discussed in the beginning with the uh, grasslands that mm -hmm. we talked okay. about. And we started working more on the plan. Motion to open the meeting to the public. Second. All in favor? Yeah. Aye. 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 Any comments, questions from the public? If not, uh, motion, motion to close. Second. <coughs> All in favor? Aye. 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 So uh, this uh, motion to go into executive session and to, um, I guess we're going to, what did we say? Discuss two properties. Pro property. Oh, uh, just a, oh, we're going to discuss two properties in executive session. I'm um, both motion to go into executive session. <laughs> Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Have a good night. Good night. Good night. Good night.